Chapter 4. Synthesis and Constraint Entry. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, the basic constraint creation flow using lattice radiant will be presented. Chapter 4 consists of five sections. In the first section of the chapter, called Constraint Basics, the general flow for constraint creation with radiant is discussed. In section 2 of the chapter, Creating LDC and SDC Constraints with Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor, Radiant's Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor is introduced, and how it can be used to create timing constraints. In Section 3 of Chapter 4, called Running Synthesis, Radiant's Task Detail View and Process Toolbar are discussed, as well as how they can be used to run the project flow for a Radiant project. In the fourth section of the chapter, Lattice Radiant Reports, we will discuss Radiant's generated reports. Finally, in the fifth section of the chapter, using Netlist Analyzer, we will introduce Radiance Netlist Analyzer and how it can be used to analyze a design synthesized netlist. Chapter 4, Section 2 Creating LDC and SDC Constraints with Pre Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing Radiance Pre Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor and how it can be used to generate pre synthesis timing constraints for a project. As mentioned in Chapter 4, Section 1 of the video series, Radiance Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor can be used to generate SDC and LDC pre-synthesis constraint files for Radiant projects. One important thing to remember is that the Timing Constraint Editor is not the only way pre-synthesis timing constraint files can be developed, and that they can also be created from scratch or imported. With that said, there are two ways to launch pre-synthesis timing constraint editor. The first way, is to select the Timing Constraint Editors icon from Radiance Toolbar. From the drop-down list of options that appears, select Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor. The second way to launch Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor, is by selecting Tools from Radiance Menu Bar. And then Timing Constraint Editor from the drop-down list of options. And finally Pre-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor. The contents of the pre-synthesis timing constraint editor depend on the active constraint file for the current project's active implementation. If there are no active LDC or SDC pre-synthesis constraint files in an implementation when timing constraint editor is launched, then its window will be empty, similar to the figure on the slide. If there is an active LDC or SDC constraint file in an implementation, then the timing constraint editor window will open pre-populated with constraints from that file. As can be seen from the example on the slide, the pre-synthesis timing constraint editor window contains several sections. At the top of the window is the constraint configuration area. This section of the timing constraint editor is used to create pre-synthesis timing constraints. Underneath the constraint configuration area are the constraint tabs. Each tab in this area correspond to a different type of pre-synthesis timing constraint that can be created with the timing constraint editor tool. Clicking any of these tabs will update the contents of the constraint configuration area, allowing users to create a pre-synthesis constraint of that type. At the bottom of the window is the constraint preview area. As pre-synthesis timing constraints are developed using the pre-synthesis timing constraint editor, this section of the window will update to display a preview of the constraints that have been created. The order that constraints appear in this preview area is the order that they will appear in the constraint file after it has been saved. A useful feature of Radiance Timing Constraint Editor is that the order of constraints in the constraint preview area can be modified by dragging and dropping a constraints row into a new area. With that said, we are now going to review the general flow for creating pre-synthesis timing constraints using the Timing Constraint Editor. To begin creating a timing constraint, users will first have to select the tab corresponding to the type of constraint they want to create. Once the correct constraint tab has been selected, the next step is to select a reference object for the constraint in the constraint editor area. In the example on the slide, we are creating a clock timing constraint and are going to configure the object's reference clock. One important thing to note is that the options available depend on the type of constraint being created. In this example, our reference object is called object clock. However, this may differ in other constraint tabs depending on the constraint. Once the object entry field has been selected, an object editor window like the figure on the slide will appear. The object editor window is used to select an object for the constraint being created. At the top of the window is the object type filter. 
Selecting this drop-down allows users to filter for the type of object they want to create a constraint for. Underneath the object type filter, are the available objects. Depending on the object type filter selected, different types of objects will appear in this area. The objects that appear here, are the objects that are available for constraint. Users can select which objects to constrain by enabling, or disabling the checkbox next to each object's name. Below the available objects area, is the object filter. This section of the window can be used to filter for specific objects inside of the available objects area. At the bottom of the object editor window, is the constraint preview area. In this section of the window, a preview of the constraint being created will appear. One important thing to remember, is that the object type filter selection also controls the constraint being generated. In the example on the slide, it can be seen that the get underscore ports constraint is being generated for the clock port object type. If the object type was something else, like clock nets, the constraint would also be different, and would instead be get underscore nets. With that said, the first step in selecting a reference object for a constraint, is to select the type of object for the constraint using the object type filter. Once the correct object type has been selected, the next step is to select which objects to reference for the constraint using the checkbox next to an object's name. In the example on the slide, the object called clock was selected, however, multiple objects can be selected depending on the project and type of constraint being created. Finally, once the correct reference objects have been selected, review the constraint preview area to ensure the correct objects were selected. And then click the OK button to confirm your selections. Once a reference object has been added for a constraint, the final step is to finish populating the other entry fields in the constraint editor area. Each row in the constraint editor area correspond to a single constraint being created. The individual columns in the constraint editor area correspond to a parameter for the constraint being created. The additional parameters in this window depend on the type of constraint being created. One important thing to note is that multiple constraints can be created in the same constraint tab. To begin creating another constraint of the same type, select the row below the last constraint that was generated. If any changes have been made in the pre-synthesis timing constraint editor window, an asterisk will appear next to the name of the tab, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. To save the constraint file, use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus S, or click the save icon from Radiance toolbar. If a pre-synthesis constraint file has not already been created, a window will appear prompting users to create one. One important thing to remember, is that the type of the generated constraint file is determined in this window. Depending on the file extension that users select, the constraints can either be saved as an LDC, or SDC pre-synthesis timing constraint file. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, Select the video titled Section 4.3, Running Synthesis.